Hello students my name is Alok Simwal and in today's lecture I am going to discuss about introduction classification mode of action and structure activity relationship of coagulants and anticoagulants So anticoagulants are the agents that prolong the coagulation time of blood Anticoagulants are usually administered to patients with acute myocardial infarction long term therapy after acute myocardial infarction and prophylaxis and treatment of pulmonary and venous thrombosis classification of anticoagulants include two main categories natural anticoagulants and oral anticoagulants heparin is a natural anticoagulant formed in the body it occurs in the mast cells as a much bigger molecule loosely bound to the granular protein it is used in vivo as well as in vitro in vivo administration involves parenteral administration second main category oral anticoagulants contain few important drug candidates such as menadione acetomenadione warfarin which is a 4 hydroxy coumarin derivative and indentione derivatives such as anisentione and clopidogrel here in this slide you can see structure of natural anticoagulant heparin following are the structures of oral anticoagulants menadione acetomenadione warfarin anisentione and clopidogrel next is mode of action of heparin heparin increases the inhibitory action of antithrombin 3 on clotting factors 12th a 11th a 9th a 10th a and thrombin it inhibits the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin and fibrinogen to fibrin it also inhibits platelet function and can reduce the activity of antithrombin 3 at very high doses clotting factors are also known as coagulation factors these are proteins except factor 4 within the clotting cascade necessary to form cross linked fibrin they were numbered in the order they were discovered calcium is factor 4 which is a critical cofactor in the activation of many of the proteins following are various coagulation factors and their common names next is mode of action of warfarin Warfarin competitively inhibits the vitamin K epoxide reductase complex 1 which is an essential enzyme for activating the vitamin K available in the body. Through this mechanism warfarin can deplete functional vitamin K reserves and therefore reduce the synthesis of active clotting factors. mode of action of anisentione anisentione inhibits the reduction of vitamin k by which it interferes with the vitamin k dependent hepatic synthesis of clotting factors this leads to an inhibition of gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues to gamma carboxyglutamic acid in clotting factors 2nd 7th 9th and 10th Gamma carboxyglutamic acid is a calcium binding amino acid and is required for the function of vitamin K dependent proteins. Structure activity relationship of warfarin. Warfarin is a 4 hydroxy coumarin derivative. which contain coumarin ring system as a basic skeleton 
Here you can see the structure of warfarin which contains this comma rendering system. In case of warfarin, comerin ring is essential for activity. 3 carbon containing side chain is essential for the activity. At this position, smaller alkyl group is well tolerated but it reduces the potency. Substitution of the aromatic ring system or long alkyl group on the comerin ring increases the activity. Four hydroxy group is required for activity. Replacement of this hydroxy group with thiol causes reduction in activity. Stereochemistry of warfarin. Warfarin is a chiral compound. Here you can see an asymmetric carbon center. And because it is a chiral compound, it is formed in two forms, S-warfarin and R-warfarin. The clinically utilized preparation is racemic, but the enantiomers are not equipotent. S-warfarin is at least fourfold more potent as an anticoagulant than the R-warfarin. Thank you.